Hi there, folks, and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. I think I got another good one here for you. I, I did a video a while back where I showed you how to replace the broken skeg on the bottom of your gearbox on your outboard. Uh, I did it by, you know, violently, let's just say it was violently, smacking the gearbox and knocked it across the room and then proceeded to reattach it. Now, keep in mind that was an old gearbox, didn't have a lot of use for it, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't intentionally just destroy a gearbox, but also repaired it. Uh, what we're going to do in this video is people had asked several questions, and they'd say, well, that's great and all, you were able to, you know, put the broken piece back on that you had. Yep. But the other comments were, well, when you break them off, you can't always find them. Well, that is very, very true. Because you're either going to hit a log or a rock or something, and the, the piece you broke off is gone. Well, this video, I'm going to show you what you do when that piece is gone and how you get it back. And how you repair it so it's, uh, it's as good as new or good enough to close to new. So, we're going to jump right in. Uh, and the folks of you that have been following my videos, and you, you know, we worked over here, I got it right here. I'm touching right there. The 19... 83.50 horse, uh, Evan Rude that we're going to put on the banana. Some great color suggestions, some great ideas coming in. I, I encourage you to go back and watch that video if you haven't already. And, uh, you know, leave your comment as to what color you think I ought to paint that outboard. And, and if you guess the same color as I do and I randomly draw the same color guess as I paint it, and you're in the United States because of shipping, I have to do that, sorry. Uh, if you're in the U.S., the, you know, the contiguous, the connected part of the U.S., um, make a guess. You might win yourself a free hat. All right, we're going to jump in here, and we're going to show you how to repair uh, the broken off skeg, how I'm going to do it. Now, I'm going to say this, and I always think about things when I'm editing. Oh, I should have said this, should have said that. Well, there might be some of those things, but I'm going to show you. A couple of the things that I'm doing because not everybody has a MIG welder or a wire or spool welder or a spool gun for the with aluminum wire to weld some of these things back together uh, some of you don't have a bunch of fancy tools I get that I'm gonna try to show you the most basic way to do this that you can do with minimal amount of cost and I'm not going to say minimal amount of effort because it will take some effort and it will take some skill and you will get frustrated. Uh, I, I, Unless you have some special skills that nobody else in this world has, you might be frustrated doing it the way I'm going to show you. But I'll be honest with you, this will be the absolute second time. What you're going to see happening in front of you will be the second time I've done this procedure. The first time I've done it was on the one that I broke on purpose. This one, I'm, I'm repairing a gearbox on a, a 1975 Mercury uh, 20 horse, and it had a, a piece broken off, and we'll get into that, and uh, we're going to put it back together. I also have, not just the one I'm going to do, this video will be just the one, but I also have another one here. That this, whoa, stay back on there. Get back where you belong. Has a broken off piece right here. I'm going to repair that one. And stay tuned to upcoming videos because you can see how big of a chunk is missing off of this one. This is the 1983-50 horse. A big chunk is gone. Is there other stuff I wanted to tell you about? Yeah, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. I don't recall. At this point is where I had realized for the first few well, let's just say segments of the video, I forgot to turn the receiver on the wireless mic on the camera, and we have silent movie. So I'm going to do a little voiceover on that part, uh, and we'll add that in and, and fix it all up so it'll be, you know, not just good, but good enough. I appreciate all the great comments you guys have been leaving me, and... I really appreciate the feedback. I appreciate all the tips you leave. It's amazing. I've got some of the greatest fans, I think, on all of YouTube. And I just want to give you guys a big thumbs up for that. Hey, and don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And 
Don't be afraid to subscribe or share. Let's grow this channel. Let's keep the content coming. Let's, let's keep the education going and let's just do what we like to do most folks. Let's play with some outboards and some inboards and some boats and let's just keep this going. All right, let's jump in. I'm gonna show you some of the steps we're gonna go through and uh, let's see how this thing turns out. I've, I've got high hopes for it, but let's just see how it turns out. All right, here I'm pointing out the fact that this has got a crooked edge here and I'm trying to blend into this surface and the fact that this skeg isn't exactly broken off and it's straight any longer. So what I'm pointing out here is that we're going to heat up this piece with my propane torch uh, until it's uncomfortably hot, you know, so you can feel a little bit of heat radiating off of it. And it's going to get all the molecular properties dancing around in there. And then once it cools off, it's going to lock it right into place and just, mm, just give it that, you know, firmness again. This will allow us to move it around freely, and then when it when we've done, you know, banging it around, we'll be able to uh, work with something that's straight versus trying to start off with something that's crooked, which is very important. Now, as you can see here, I'm kind of demonstrating how I'm heating it up and warming it up. I'm not getting crazy here. We're not trying to cook or melt this thing at this point in time. We're not trying to make it hot enough to even solder at this point or aluminum weld, gas weld with at this point. Once we get it where it's good and hot, you know, I'm gonna put my hand over it and kind of go, yeah, that's pretty warm. And then I'm gonna take it over the anvil here. And I've got a soft side and a firm side of my hammer. I'm gonna use the soft side of my hammer uh, to kind of bang this around a little bit because it kind of, it's, it's less, let's just say less harsh. But I'm trying to get the last little bit, a bit of this skeg that's bent, just kind of flatten it out a little bit, make sure everything's straight and true, light taps, you know, Make sure you're, you're sitting flat as possible. Maybe lift it up, push it down. What are we gonna do to kind of massage this around a little bit? And once you've got it massaged around and looking pretty good, you know, everything looks nice and straight, we'll go back over to the, to the other bench, or I shouldn't say bench, my other holder, and we're gonna take the four inch, a four and a half inch death wheel, I call it. It's a little cutting blade, and we're just gonna cut this off and get us a nice straight area in order to be able to uh, have a nice, you know, I'm going to gain some more surface that are weld to as well. Uh, more of a straight line, easier to make our little, uh, whatever you want, a coupon or a little piece that we're going to weld in place. Now that we've got this ground off somewhat straight, I'm going to take my flat disc and I'm going to put a bevel on it, bring her to kind of a point. What I want to do there is that that's preparation for my weld so I can bring that back, uh, fill that in with 100% weld fillet for maximum strength. Do an even amount from both sides. Now you guys might think I've ground that back a ways, but what that's gonna do for me, that's gonna bring my weld thickness back to here. So when I bring it back to this thickness here, I'm gonna have a lot of weld fillet there that's gonna give the bottom piece a little strength. That's the whole goal behind that. Now that, th now that this is completely prepped, we're gonna come down here and I'm gonna do a little, uh, we gotta do a little you know, creative, let's just call it creative uh, grinding here. I'm gonna mark this as a, you know, that kind of comes down like that. I'm using this edge here as my straight edge, and then it's going to come up down about something like that. That's what we're going to attach back on here. Now, this is a little bit thicker than this material here, is what you want. Because it'll allow you to weld it, and then grind it and finish it to the same thickness this is, is the goal. But you guys kind of see what I got going on? Now I'm going to cut this along here. Now I don't have a good way to cut this. I'm going to cut this off in my bandsaw, then I'll take it over to my belt sander and I'll shape it. 
You could also, you know, hacksaw it and grind it. Maybe I'll just hacksaw this. Let's just do the hacksaw. I mean, why not? I got a hacksaw with a fairly new blade in it. It's actually brand new. Let's just see what we can do. Look at that. Well, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to bevel this so I have a nice fillet weld for this piece too. We're going to bevel it equally here, same way I did the other one. Okay, we've got the bevel ground on both sides here. Now, you might be tempted to go and grab that with your bare hand, and I did that a second ago, and it burnt the living poop out of my finger. I can't feel anything on my fingertips right now. See, we got a nice little knife edge on there now. Now you can see we got the beveled piece, and we got this piece we'll be able to do just like this. You guys can see how that's already going to be starting to turn out, right? Now the hard part, how do I hold it while I do all this torching? Well, I'm going to show you what I do. Now I'm going to tell you folks, this is about as redneck as it gets, but this is what works for me. Is I have to use a pair of channel locks, and I use a jaw opening, and I use a little bitty C-clamps, and I clamp my two pieces together. Now it's held in place, uh, so I can actually put my weld right in here, fill all that in. And, and it's holding it, and I can get everything on both sides this way. Well, I guess all that's left to do is the doing it. And heat, heat control is one of the hardest things to get used to. If you're learning how to do this, I'm going to tell you right now, you might fail the first couple times you try. But you got to try it. So we're going to go ahead and get after it with the heat here. Now these freshly ground surfaces should weld up just fine. Because they are fresh, there's no oil. If there's any contaminants on here, we would be burning it off. Now, you're going to see me do this a lot. And this is just to test the temperature. See how that rod melted? But see, it's not wetting out. And what I mean wetting out, it's not flowing into the joint yet. That means the material is not warm enough. You want to get it warm enough so when you wipe on it, it actually melts to it. And when you, when you start to get close, you'll feel this get sticky. When you drab your welding rod across it, you'll feel it like kind of sticking a little bit. We're getting real close. There you can see it's starting to wet out. Looks like it's stuck to it. And here's where temperature control gets really tricky. Because there's a fine line between melting it and getting it stick and having it dripping off on you.
you see that puddle there? She's about ready to drip on me. Now what I did is I'm flipping it over and I'm going to work on the other side now a little bit. I'm going to let this end dry, you know, cool off. I'm going to work this side a little bit. See, that's wetting right out real nice real quick. Now we want to get this well clear up on this area here where we ground. Remember this piece is still thicker. Bottle's starting to run out. And this side's looking pretty good. Now I went out and quenched it the other side. I quenched it in water to cool this down because it was getting kind of warm. You guys are going to say, oh, you can't quench that. You can't. You can. Aluminum, it's okay to quench. Aluminum, it anneals it when you quench it. It doesn't work hard or harden it like it does high carbon steel. It's just going to get that out there in front of everybody. Now, I want to work on getting the other half. As you can see, some of this kind of puddled up. I don't know if you can see it from that angle. Let me see if I can get you a better angle here. You can, you can see how this kind of puddled. So I'm going to work this side. And it's, it's ideal if you get this as level as possible while you're working on it. Your puddle will lay out better. Now what I'm doing right now, I would call, basically I'm kind of cold working it, keeping just enough heat to attach it to itself now, and doing some buildup. I'm actually putting more, more heat into the rod than I am the material. You can see it wet out every now and then. Like we got plenty of build up there it looks like. I'm gonna flip it back over because we did have some drippage happen from the other side. We're gonna try to touch that up a little bit. Now this build up's okay but it's kind of sunk in a little bit here. We gotta do a little filler. That's good enough. Let's go cool it off. Now once we got it all welded up and cooled off, we can start the grinding on it. Now comes the artistic part. The grinding and the reshaping of it all. 
I'll kind of put you guys back a little bit because I don't want all this grinding dust to end up all over my camera too bad. Now, as I'm grinding here, I'm kind of favoring the thicker piece first. And I'm going to start, and I'm working it down until I can blend it. Now I'm going to bring you in a little closer. You can see now we're starting to blend in with things. We're starting to get things to feel similar. This is still the thicker part. So we're going to grind it a little more. Now as you're grinding this down, start looking at it from the front angle, the back angle, the bottom. You know, make sure you're keeping your grind as clean as possible. So everything looks like it stays pretty centered. Now as it starts to take shape, I know it's hard to see. This looks like it's got a lot of glare on it. That's because it's so shiny. But now I'm going to work. I've been working the wheel this way. Now I'm going to go this way a little bit and start watching the blend. Because this thing has a taper to it. Slight taper. <laughs> Now you can see we're starting to get the blend in here. We're starting to get that blend to come right in. That line, that weld line edge should just about disappear when you're done. Let's flip it over and do the other side now. We're getting really close to being done. Now when you're getting right down here to the very end, you got to keep channeling your inner Bob Ross. You know, you got to put a little happy little curve here and a, you know, a happy little blend there and stuff like that. Also, when you're down near the last little bit, use your hands to feel. You can, you'd be surprised what your fingers can detect on thickness and blend. My gosh, that turned out so good. Basically, what I'm using the file for is just get rid of the burrs and the sharp edges. Should hold until the next rock. But now you can see that the tip here is, you know, just down below the tip of the, of the prop. That's where it should be. That turned out great. I think we'll have to give that the old Craigslist rebuild, you know, put some black paint on it. Just knocking off a few of the extra bump de boos here. I think that turned out pretty nice. Well, there you have it, folks. This is done. Uh, you know, some of these, some folks might make a make a comment about the point on here versus it being a nice rounded off area that might take a little more. Let's just say take a little more abuse. I don't know. It's right now at this point. I'm calling this point personal preference. This thing slices through the water like a shark fin now. And keep in mind, this is your rudder. I mean, this is your propulsion. This is your rudder. And yes, there is a lot of body right down here that could act like a rudder. And, but this, by having a full skeg, it's, you know, form your own opinions. I've got mine, you've got yours, and other people have theirs. Don't be afraid to comment below. But uh, yeah, this, is, uh, this turned out what I would call pretty okay for an old 1975. We'll be, we're waiting on a water pump for it yet, and we'll get the water pump and we'll stick it back on that. But that, this video wasn't about the water pump. This is video about skeg repair only, pretty much. Uh, I've got a couple other ones to do. As I work on those particular outboards, I'll probably do another video, uh, you know, inside the video of the skeg repair for it. This one here I just thought would be a good example of how to do it if you have uh, you know, the piece is gone and you need to create a piece. Now you can go pick up some aluminum, but some, you know, scrap yards have little chunks of aluminum. There's little places like, uh, uh, McMaster, you know, car.com or MSC, 
Direct.com. This is MSCDirect.com. They sell little pieces of metal. You might pay a crazy price for it too, for, for what it is. You might pay 10 or $12 for a chunk this big, but a chunk this big is enough to do, you know, five, six, seven of those repairs. And that's just that. But, uh, but if you can go to your local scrapyard where they have, you just look up, Google it, you know, scrap, scrap aluminum near me. And quite frankly, it doesn't matter what type of aluminum, you know, this was like a 6061, you can buy 2024, 70, 70, 75. This particular welding rod will pretty much glue all those non-ferrous type metals together like that of aluminum, or as other people pronounce it, aluminum. But uh, I, I think it turned out well. Like I said, for the second one I've done, I'll by the time I get done this winter, I'll be doing another two, one, two, three. There's at least three more. But the trick is keeping the temperature so it just melts and bonds together. And then the second thing is to, it's okay to quench. Now, some of you people are going to go, oh, God, he dropped it in water. He's, he ran cold water over it. He ruined it. It's going to crystal. Aluminum doesn't do that. Look it up. Aluminum, that's part of the annealing process. It will actually make it more pliable and softer, so it will have a tendency to bend more than break. Uh, now, some people might say, oh, that's going to break off so easy. Yes, it's aluminum, and the original one broke off. It's no worse than the original, but it will not break off while you're in the water. It will break off when you hit something, just like all the other skegs. There's no skeg that I know of that just, just broke off. You hit something. You may not felt, depending on the boat and what you're doing, you may not have felt it hit, but it hit. That's how it broke off. These things are just a little thin wafer of a piece of aluminum sticking up in the sky, and it's cast. Cast is, uh, you know, doesn't have any grain structure, doesn't have any, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, you know. It's, it just, it will break easy, easy enough. Anyway, that's my video on this. I hope you folks enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. And if my grandson out there, I'm going to start mentioning some of the, some of the grandkids out there because a handful of them watch my videos on a regular basis. So Everett, this one's for you, buddy. I hope you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And this is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. And we'll see you on the next video. Enjoy yourself. Man, there's a... Strong smell of paint in here. <coughs> yep, it sure is. Mm -hmm.